Hi quilters, today I'm gonna to show you how to make this awesome little ice cream bucket carry-all. You will need four different fabrics, three eighths yard of each. You need five eighths yard of a fusible woven stabilizer. You need thread to match, four to six safety pins and or buttons, and then a scrap of soft and stable. You also need one one gallon bucket from ice cream. Now my husband likes ice cream. I mean, he really likes ice cream. And did I mention that he likes ice cream? It's time to cut from your main fabric, the outside pocket fabric, you need to cut two rectangles that are five and a half by 14 and a half and two rectangles that are six inches by 13 and a half inches. From the inside pocket fabric, you need to cut four rectangles, one inch by 14 and a half inches, two rectangles, five and a half inches by 13 and a half inches, and two rectangles, six inches by 14 and a half inches. From the inside bucket fabric, cut four rectangles, six inches by 13 and a half inches. From the outside fabric, cut four rectangles, six and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. From a woven fusible, cut two rectangles measuring six and a half inches by 14 and a half inches, two rectangles that measure five and a half inches by 14 and a half inches, two rectangles that measure six inches by 13 and a half inches, two rectangles that measure five and a half inches by 13 and a half inches, and two rectangles that measure one inch by 14 and a half inches. Match the stabilizer pieces to the appropriate fabrics and fuse to the wrong side of the fabric. Put stabilizer on the back of the five and a half inch by 14 and a half inch outer pocket fabric pieces. When I'm pressing the stabilizer onto fabrics, I will iron from the back side first, then I will flip it over and iron from the front to make sure I haven't put any wrinkles into the fabric. The five and a half inch by 13 and a half inch rectangles of the stabilizer get pressed to the back side of the inside pocket fabric. You will press stabilizer to two of the four one inch by 14 and a half inch rectangles of the inside pocket fabric. The woven fusible also gets put on the back side of two each of the four rectangles that measure six inch by 13 and a half inch and six and a half inch by 14 and a half inch. Now it's time to start sewing it all together. We're gonna to make the outside pockets first. Piece the two six inch by 14 and a half inch rectangles of the inside pocket fabric to the two five and a half inch by 14 and a half inch outer pocket rectangles that have the stabilizer on the back side. You will sew along the 14 and a half inch edges with the right sides together. And yes, they are different widths, so they won't match up all the way around. The one piece should be about half inch wider than the other piece. You're gonna to press towards the piece that doesn't have the stabilizer, and then you're gonna wrap that fabric around to the back side so that on the front is gonna create what looks kind of like a little piece of binding. Once you've pressed both of the pockets, top stitch along the seam line at the top. When I'm done with that, I'm going to flip it around to the back side and base the bottom edge together so there aren't any loose pieces.
Now it's time to make the inside pockets. These are pieced the same way as the outside pockets, but using the rectangles that measure 13 and a half inches long. Piece the six inch by 13 and a half inch outer pocket fabric rectangles to the five and a half inch by 13 and a half inch inside pocket fabric rectangles that have the stabilizer on the back side of them. The inside pockets and the outside pockets are opposite each other fabric wise. Press and top stitch these pockets the same way you did the other two. You should have four pockets total, two of each size, two that are 13 and a half inches long and two that are 14 and a half inches long. If you want to add any creative stitching, trims, or ribbons to the pockets, now would be the time to add that. Now we're gonna make the base units. Piece a 1 inch by 14 and a half inch rectangle with stabilizer to the 6 and a half inch by 14 and a half inch outside bucket fabric rectangle. Finger press away from the smaller rectangle. Now piece the six inch by 13 and a half inch inside bucket fabric to this unit. You will have to center the smaller rectangle onto the unit. You need to have about a half inch on both end. Make two of these units. Make two of these same units using the large rectangles that have the stabilizer and the one inch rectangle that doesn't have the stabilizer. Make sure to press all four of the base units. In total, you should have four of the base units, two that have stabilizer on the large rectangles and two that only have stabilizer on the little rectangle in the center. Now it's time to add pockets to the base units. Place the finished pockets on the base units with the stabilizer on the big rectangles, matching the lengths of the pockets to the base units. Pin them in place so that you can baste along the edges to secure the pockets to the base unit. You're gonna sew the three sides of the pocket to the base unit on all four pockets.
Once you have all the edges sewn, remove the pins and determine where you want the pockets to be. Once you've determined the size of pockets you need, sew through all the layers to make the pockets. It's almost time to put it all together. On the wrong side of the base units without the pockets, we're gonna mark a sewing line on the center rectangle to follow when we're sewing the base units together. Measure in a half an inch from the sides of both of the big rectangles and make a mark in the seam allowance. Then, using a ruler, draw a line to connect those two lines together. Pin a base unit without pockets to a base unit with pockets. Using a half inch seam allowance, you are going to sew on three of the sides of this unit. Make sure to backstitch or reinforce the beginning and end and each of the corners. When you sew the transition between the smaller rectangles and the larger rectangles, you will sew right on that line that you made. Once you've sewn both of the base units together, clip the corners and turn the units right side out. Make sure you poke out all of the fabric where it might get stuck in on itself and those little jogs that we make for the seam allowance. And then when you have done that, 
press it nice and flat from both sides. Next, we need to attach a base to this unit. Base around the bottom of the bucket onto a piece of soft and stable. Cut it out and then make sure that it fits in the bottom of the bucket. I had to trim mine just a little bit to make sure that it laid flat in the bottom of my bucket. Doing it this way, you can make it work for either a rectangular or octagonal bottom or a round bottom. It doesn't matter the shape of the bottom of the bucket, as long as that soft and stable fits in the very bottom. Base some fabric to both sides of this soft and stable piece. Now you can pin the bottom unit to the pocket unit. This is a little bit tricky as the bottom unit is kind of roundish and will you'll have to kind of slide the fabric along there to make it fit. You will sew the entire edge of the pocket unit to the bottom unit. As you're pinning it in place, it starts to look a little funky, but you just keep wiggling that fabric and making it fit around the bottom of that piece. Once you have it pinned, I usually take a look at it just to make sure I haven't put any major creases or folds in it. And then I wanna sew it down from the other side. And what you wanna do is just go around quarter edge. You can do this with a straight stitch or you could do it with a zigzag. This is just a quarter inch seam allowance. Now you're gonna center the pocket unit on the other side and pin that one in place, the same as you did the first one. At the corners, these will overlap a little bit. So you'll be sewing through multiple layers on some of those corners. That's exactly the way it's supposed to go. These should overlap the same amount on both sides. And the place where they overlap is the spot where the handles will be on the ice cream bucket. And you'll kind of fit one side of the pocket on one side of the bucket and then the other pocket will fit on the other side of the bucket. You can zigzag or surge around the edge of this unit at the bottom. It will all be raw edges on the bottom of the bucket but it's hidden inside and you won't be able to notice it once the pocket unit is in and on the ice cream bucket.
Now there's only one thing left to do. You're gonna put it inside the ice cream bucket and fold the pocket flaps over the sides and around the handles. Push the base down into the bottom of the bucket and adjust the sides just to make everything fit right. If you want, you can connect the outer sides to each other on the handle corners with using safety pins or buttons or hand stitching or whatever you like. If you attach it in a way that's not permanent, you'll be able to remove it from the ice cream bucket in case you need to wash it or clean it. As you can see, those raw edges are hidden inside the bucket. You can't really see that there are raw edges in there. And holding it down like this and pinning it in the corners helps keep it stable and from falling off the bucket if you were to tip it upside down. You can also use safety pins from the insides to attach buttons on the corners to make it look a little fancier. Or you can just sew the buttons into place with a needle and thread. Now that it's done, you can fill the bucket with whatever you need to haul around. It's a great way to carry quilting supplies anywhere you need to go. I have one that I use to store all my hair supplies at home, one that I have first aid things in, and the new one I just made will be great for all of our decks of cards and small games and game pieces. We hope you'll hit that like button, make a comment, Share with your quilting friends and subscribe so you can see everything we're doing at the Quilted Forest. Thanks for watching and happy quilting. Here is a written pattern for the ice cream bucket caddy. You can find the PDF in the files section of our Facebook group called the Quilted Forest Friends. There is a link in the description below to get you to the group. Or you could take screenshots and print it at home.